Hi, you guys. If you like my channel, Deca Dish Dana, please subscribe, hit the notification button, and tell people about it. And like the video, because I think that helps too. Okay, so The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills was nominated for a People's Choice Award, and they lost to Keeping Up with the Kardashians. That wasn't really what this video is about. It really is about what the fashion that the women wore to the People's Choice Awards kind of shows about them. I love to do this. I did this at the reunion for season 11, and I think it's it like the outfits really say something about the person. So we're gonna go through them. I'm gonna first show you a picture from the red carpet at the People's Choice Award in, in case you missed it. And uh, yeah. by the way, I think we were really, all of us, because we did do this together as a group, were pretty bang on with the reunion, right? Because some of them talked, like Erica Jane admitted that her look was LA Confidential, and I had said she was doing a real shout out to the old Hollywood, like Marilyn Monroe vibe with that pink dress she wore. And, and I said, she's trying to kind of tap that with all of the drama happening with Tom Girardi and we were right. So I'm about to show you now, right now, the pictures because I want you to comment below uh, with what you think it means. Do you agree with me or do you have another idea? I'm open, I'm open-minded. First, let's start with Erica Jane Girardi. Uh, she wore, of course, a black turtleneck, long-sleeved dress that was kind of fitted with this very strange fake hair on her head, definitely fake, in the shape of a lightning bolt. Looked like a lightning bolt was going through a bun on the top of her head. And people uh, really found the hair a little just silly in the sense that maybe it was like just a little too young vibed for her age. You know, she is in her 50s, right? And it was also just like strange, like to have an object on your head that the fair hair looks so fake. It just like looked like she was wearing like a weird object on her head rather than hair. Um, yeah, it was really strange. Anyway, that's why I'm wearing bananas on my head. It kind of had this vibe. My thoughts on Erica's look is this look says to me, um, I'm gonna let my hair speak for the whole outfit. And I'm probably selling this hair piece in the top of my head and announcing it as like a hair extension collection that I'm doing like a day or two later. So I'm really wearing a black dress that's really boring so that all the attention goes to this weird thing on my head, which I'm also selling. And I also think it says, look at me. I always need the attention. It's like never enough to just look normal and go to something and just be pretty. I have to constantly be like demanding the attention in some strange way. Okay. Now, some people might have really liked, um, you know, the lightning bolt like as a statement. And obviously she did mute it with a very like boring rest of her outfit. So she did balance. So this look that really reminded me of Cynthia from Rugrats, that's the little doll that has like the whacked out hair. Anyways, uh, uh, basically it did come out that she is launching Pretty Mess Hair, which is why she's wearing it. That, that was her new hair company something from that company. And so uh, she's doing like extensions now and I guess, you know, fake hair things that you put on your head, whatever. Anyway, that's what she's doing. So she was modeling one of those things and that's why her dress is very simple. So you will notice her hair and then she'll get articles written about it and people like me blogging about it. So it worked, good for you, Erica. All right, let's move on to the next. That person. brings us to Dorit's dress, which basically was not there at all. It was uh, essentially all black. It had like a bra top and then it was completely cut out on both sides with a tiny, kind of looked like a bathing suit from the first half of it. But then it dropped, like the dress started under, like halfway down her ass. And then it was like a regular flowing dress. 
And so what this said to me was that there may be trouble in paradise between Dory and PK because why is she going out to the People's Choice Awards? Like obviously dieting, working out a lot, even for her, and trying to be this much of, you know, get guys to notice her. There's no other point of this dress, like to get guys to flirt with flirt. her. I'm going to make sure you heard that ending. I know sometimes I let my little one minutes run out and cut off, but this one I wanted you to hear. Yep. My radar is going off with this dress. She wants to be noticed and it's not by women. Okay. And it's not by fans. Just saying. Think about it. Like when was the last time you slutted it up? Probably when you were single, right? probably when you were thinking about getting single. Doesn't take a rocket scientist, kids. Just saying. You heard it here first. Okay, that brings us to Crystal Minkoff's dress. Her dress was like a, a circle neck with no sexy shoulders. Like it looked like she was wearing like a t-shirt that was made of gold that was also a dress that like kept going. It was very loosely fitted. It didn't fit her right. I, you know, I'm sure it was couture, but to me, it looked like she had it in her closet. She was like, what does one wear to the People's Choice Awards? I have no idea. It said to me, I'm happily married and I kind of like, I'm here, but I don't really care that I'm here and I can't wait to go home to Rob. And Rob's really like helped me pick this dress out because he's kind of conservative and you know what I mean? He's like a little bit old fashioned in the way he dresses and this kind of comes off that way. It does have baggy black leather pant vibe. The ones that Sutton didn't like, you know, the ugly leather pant. Yeah, it has a little of that. It's kind of like, it's not fitted, right? Kyle had a little girl vibe going on. She was wearing this like very um, youthful, it was all black with like a silver uh, sash to call it, you know, to call out her waistline. But it was very poofy and very um, kind of little girlish to me. Um, party girl dress kind of thing. I feel like it had Paris Hilton's influence in it. Um, it kind of sp spoke to me in that way, something Paris would wear, kind of cutesy. Um, it definitely screams to me that Kyle is trying to present a more youthful uh, vibe than her age and she feels like she can connect with fans if they perceive her to be younger at this kind of an event like the People's Choice Awards. So that was like a strategic decision. Now Lisa Renna had these giant hoop earrings. This was the, the best one I could find <laughs> for a filter. I'm bobbing my head back and forth so you can really feel them. But she had these giants circle, it looks like diamond earrings, but I mean, it literally looked like she had like a leash on one ear and like a leash on the other. I could have rode <laughs> Lisa Renna into the People's Choice Awards with her earrings. But um, her dress was super cute. Can't complain about the dress. It was, you know, a simple black, uh, well-fitted on her physique dress with the V-neck, very flattering on her. Uh, she went for like a retro hair. I actually have no complaints with Lisa's look, except the earrings, which are hilarious. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's do Garcelle now. Okay, Garcelle's, I'm picking this filter because really Garcelle's whole look was about this diamond necklace she was wearing. I don't know if she has a relationship with the person who made it, but it was definitely meant to be the central focus of her outfit. So she's wearing this like kind of pink taffeta dress. It was a little bit retro. I wasn't crazy about the pink dress, but I, I see what she was doing, which was like really calling out the attention to the necklace. And then she wore these accessories to again, I think feature the necklace, which was these uh, diamond half cut gloves, which I really dug because I'm from the, you know, I grew up, during the 80s, I was mad into those gloves. Those are from the 80s. Uh, Madonna was the one who really like started that trend because it was a big trend in the West Village in New York for fashion. Betsy Johnson was influenced by that time and everybody. But anyway, then she has these kick-ass silver diamond And the boots. diamond boots were breathtaking. They were just stunning. 
I mean, really stole the show. She didn't need much else. I do like that she tried to do pink and diamond or pink and, you know, shiny together. I thought that was really an interesting choice. And I did, I did really enjoy that. Um, what does that say about Garcelle? Meaning, I feel like she's like, I am going to continue to set myself apart from the rest of the group. I'm not going, you know, I'm going to trend my own trend. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm not going to like, I'm not going to be assimilated into any clique or a group of people. I'm just going to be my own girl and stand, you know what I mean? Like, have my own style choices, not let anyone influence me. And I, I think that's what she was going for. I think that's important to Garcelle. This is just me reading her fashion. Sun had an interesting choice. She wore a leather kind of shout out again to the 80s. Um, what do you call that? Um, like 1950s gang jacket, I guess, Greece. You know what I mean? I love Greece. Okay, I keep going back to Greece, but you know, that kind of, um, you know, T-bird jacket, I guess, motorcycle jacket, vibe suit. And what was unique about it is it had these really feminine arms that were bright pink. Like, I can only imagine that that suit cost a fortune uh, based on the intricacy of the pink in the sleeves. Um, I liked it. I, would I wear it in California at the People's Choice Awards? No, I think it was the wrong event for it. I do believe that Sutton's uh, fashion kind of says, I'm still trying to figure out what to wear. On purpose, I'm sitting to the side so you can see these weird wings behind me because really, truly, that all, I, I didn't notice that Lisa's sleeves from the first picture I was working off of, the cap sleeves are enormous. And I am gonna say that although I still am a fan of the dress, little bit over the top with the cap sleeves. I think they could have brought those down a notch, but I know why they chose them for her. They chose them because she's so skinny at this point that they have to build some mass on her or she like gets lost in the dress. So the sleeves are meant to make her look more present in the dress, which maybe the meaning of Lisa Rinna's dress is I'm suffering because of all the loss and problems I've had this year and I'm not eating enough and I basically am needing to have my big sleeves on my dress to make me look a little bit bigger, right? So that I'm not even lost in a basic piece of clothing. Anyway, if the girls needed to fly anywhere later that evening after the People's Choice Awards, they could have just jumped on Lisa Renna's back and like sky glided out of there on those sleeves. So maybe she wore them because they're multi-purposed. <laughs> anyway, at least they got invited to the People's Choice Awards. I actually went to a bunch of those uh, award shows when I was younger and I was in LA. And I used to watch them for a good half hour and then I ended up always getting bored and I ended up leaving and partying out in the lobby. Isn't that weird? I enjoy talking to people more than watching people perform and get awards. I know, that's weird, right? I should be like, oh yeah, I'm at this free concert with all this cool stuff, but I, I wasn't. I was always out in the concession stand meeting everybody out in the lobby talking instead of being in the award show. If, that, if I actually ever got an award, I wouldn't even know it because I'd be out by the concessions. They'd be like, you missed your award, Dana. <laughs> hey, to each their own. All right, you guys, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Mwah.